the break, kids. Oh, oh my gosh, look at you. You look so different. <laughs> now here's what's going on, kids. I've been getting some feedback from some of the little ghouligans, right? Some of the little ghouligans have been taking issue with that deathly white pallor, or the, the deep sunken eyes, or the, the hollowed cheeks, and it set them off my bubbling personality, man. It made them a little nervous, so we tried to soften things up, man. Soften it up just a little bit, a little Dr. Ghoul light, man. I went down to my local a and and I got some Caucasian base makeup, right? And we're gonna try that, try to soften things up and see how that uh, works out for us. Now today we've got a dish that's brilliant coming up. It's called Chicken Gregory. It's going to be really good. I'm going to tell you where it came from and what it's all about. So stay tuned. We're going to be watching The Devil's Wedding Night here on Cooking with Dr. Ghoul. <laughs>
and much of his strange and evil power was attributed to this mysterious unknown ring which endowed him with extra <coughs> extraordinary and supernatural powers not merely over creatures of his own curious ilk but over mankind as well the ring's golden band had embedded in it a large glowing stone having the color of blood and when the light of the full moon struck its surface weird eerie and uncanny phenomena took place and the sinister night creatures lurking in the shadows would have their black feast Once upon a midnight dreary, as he pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe, a writer from the New World who's quite the rage these days. I'd say his morbid style is rather suited to you, Carl. <sighs> Don't you ever tire of pondering, dear boy. Friends, I've just made an important discovery. Well, I hope it's important enough to cover all my gambling debts with. Again, <laughs> Lady Luck wasn't very kind to me tonight. It's incredible, Franz. The long-lost ring of the Nibelungen. I think I've discovered its whereabouts. The ring of the Nibelungen? I thought it only existed in Wagner's operas. Huh, we're out of brandy. <laughs> its legend dates back much farther. <laughs> much before Wagner. Jaila spoke of it in 200 B.C. So did Tarpon 1300, and here again, Synesio, the Greek. The possessor of the ring may have power over all mankind if he's willing to renounce love. Hmm. Quite a price to pay, love. It's reputed to have passed through the hands of some of the most powerful figures in history. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, Attila the Hun, Ivan the Terrible, uh, William the Conqueror. Should have the archaeologist. <laughs> you jest. But I'm convinced that it actually exists and I intend to find it. Just think of it, Franz. The ring of the Nibelungen. Yes, I've decided to leave in the morning. You're not wasting any time, are you? What does this magnificent treasure look like? The ring is singular in its aspect. It's band fashioned from common gold, but with a huge stone that, although similar in appearance to a ruby, is comprised of a substance unlike that of any to be found on Earth. One theory has it that the stone itself was extricated from an ancient meteorite which landed in the Carpathian Mountains. I dare say it must be quite valuable. Invaluable. Any collector would be willing to pay millions for it. But if I find it, I shall never allow it to fall into private hands. Too precarious for mankind. No, I shall consign it straight away to the Karnstein Museum of Archaeology, where safe and secure, the ring will go on display for all to see. Carl, your benevolence overwhelms me. And where did you say was last seen this fantastic ring of yours? The Carpathian Mountains? In Transylvania. Transylvania? But that's vampire country. You have heard of those blood-sucking creatures, haven't you? <laughs> hmm. Eliphas, in his book of occult mysteries, describes them thusly. Sine morte mortis, sine vite vivent. Alive without life, dead without death. Aren't you frightened you might get bitten on the neck? <laughs> I never exclude any possibility. So I shall go protected. I found this talisman, this amulet, during my expedition in the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. It was worn in homage to the demon god Pazuzu. Pazuzu? It's supposed to protect the wearer against all forms of supernatural evil, of any sort. Hmm. Which, I take it, would apply to vampires, too. If indeed they do exist. Well, I'd better rest up for the journey ahead. 
So I bid you good night, Frank. Mm -hmm. Where exactly in Transylvania are you going? Just in case I should have to come and rescue you. In the proximity of a village called Ladraku. Castle Dracula, to be exact. tall beer to raise my spirits after a long weary ride and a bed and food mm -mm. a tall beer and a soft bed mm -hmm. I'll be right back Here, aren't you? What brings you to these parts? Hey, mister. Business. Is that so? Business, huh? And at this particular time? Research. Work. Here? In Ladraku? Castle Dracula. My daughter will show you to your room. This way, please. Huh. Rather strange, those boys downstairs. Is everyone in La Dracu like that? It's only, well, we're not used to having strangers here, you see. You mean strangers who come to visit Castle Dracula? Yes. Is that true always? Or only at this particular time? Yes, both. But especially now. Why, is this vampire season? I... Well, then... For all you know, I could be a vampire. Forgive me. I didn't mean to frighten you. Never mind. That's all right. It's merely that I don't take these tales very seriously. I, I don't either, yet tomorrow night is supposedly the night of the virgin moon. And everybody in Landrugu is very nervous. The night of the virgin moon? Yes, they say it occurs every 50 years. On the night of the first full moon after midsummer, five virgins are chosen from the village and called to the castle. Chosen? Who is it that chooses them? No one knows. 
It just happens. They go off in the middle of the night, and they never come back. Terrible things are supposed to happen to them. But you don't believe this legend. I don't want to. But some of the elders of the village swear to it. Well, I seem to have arrived in time for the fun. You joke. Are you worried? I wish I could help. Must you go to that horrible castle? <laughs> I have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. You see this amulet? It's magic. All I do is put it around my neck. And I'm protected against evil monsters of all sorts. And since they're only interested in virgins, why, I'm doubly protected. How insensitive I must seem, thinking of my own protection, when I should think of yours. Is anybody home? Yes. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, I didn't see you. I hope you'll forgive this early morning intrusion, but I was quite anxious to visit the castle here. I'm making a tour of the castles in Transylvania to complete my architectural studies, and I... Oh, forgive me. I'm Dr. Schiller. Dr. Franz Schiller. This way. Countess Dollingen de Vries is absent. Oh. When do you expect to return? Perhaps in a few hours. 
Or maybe later. Or only this evening. Uh, I... Perhaps. Okay, let's look into the ingredients for our chicken Gregory. Now, we've got some great stuff here. We've got the chicken tenderloins. Now, uh, in lieu of chicken tenderloins, you can also use uh, boned chicken thighs. Those are also very, very good for this. I recommend, however, the thinner strips like this. If you've got uh, the full chicken breast, just cut them into the smaller pieces like this, and they'll cook a lot better with this style of dish. Now, we're going to be cooking with the thought of some. Exactly how much of all of this stuff? Well, we're gonna use some. 
we're going to use some garlic powder. I'll show you how to measure it all out. Don't worry about it. We've got some Cajun slash Creole seasoning. Um, if you don't want to make your own, we can uh, also get some Tony Shushers. I recommend that because it's really, really good. Get a small yellow onion. We get some uh, chicken bouillon. I like the paste. Some people like the cubes. Doesn't matter. You can even buy uh, broth uh, and then the, the can or the box or whatever, and it's all really very good. We've got Brussels sprouts. Take a look at that. If you think you don't like them, try them. I feel like I'm talking to a nine-year-old kid. Wait a minute. That's how my mom talked to me. Anyway, they're going to be really good with this. We also need some celery, some carrots, and some green onions, and a very important bit of seasoning here, this Maggie uh, seasoning right here. You can get this at most local grocery stores. If not, uh, like me, I ordered mine uh, off Amazon, and uh, it's some really good stuff. So take a look. This is what we're going to start with, and uh, stay tuned, and we'll get it all together. Okay, now we've processed our vegetables, man. We've got our, uh, our carrots diced. We've got our green onions uh, cut up, our celery, uh, and our big uh, yellow onion uh, diced up a little here. Now, you can cut these uh, more coarsely if you'd like, you know, bigger chunks of, of onion uh, and stuff like that. That's all going to cook down, all right? Now, most frequently when you're cooking your vegetables, you're going to want to, like pasta, you're going to want it al dente, just a little bit of bite, a tiny bit of crunch to it. Uh, this isn't quite the same way. The uh, celery is going to cook way down. The uh, onions are going to cook down. Uh, even the green onions. Um, the carrots uh, aren't going to be mushy, uh, but they're going to be uh, a little softer because all of this is going to go together for the base uh, to cook around. These little guys right here and those uh, chicken tenderloins that we showed you just a minute ago. So hang out a second and we'll show you how this all gets together. Hey kids, welcome back. And we're getting ready to start on our brilliant dish, Chicken Gregory. Now let me explain to you, while we're cooking, where this came from, man. I was lucky enough to work with a guy, a chef as it were, not a ghoul, but a chef. And this chef, I don't wanna give you his whole name because He's a really cool guy, and I'm sure he enjoys his privacy. But I'm going to tell you his last name because there's more than one chef with this last name, and it's okay. His last name was Gregory, and he was a heck of a good chef. Still is. And let me tell you how good this guy is. This man, and I'm not making this up, okay? This feller worked with Julia Childs. Think about that for a second. How cool is that? This guy has traveled the world. He's been everywhere, man, and I mean everywhere. I've seen his collection of, of really cool stuff from around the world. He's been to China, he's been to Japan, he's been to all through Europe. He's been to all these different places, man. This dude is even in Ripley's Believe It or Not. Think about that. You know why? You know why? I bet you don't know why. Because somebody brought him a flipping cobra and they cooked it. <laughs> he even worked on uh, one of the editions of The Joy of Cooking. So this guy knows his ABCs, P's, Q's, dotted I's, and cross T's. Now here's what we do. I've got a little bit of oil in the pan here. I suggest a deep pan, you know, because we're going to be putting a lot of stuff in here. And you can use a shallow pan, but you're going to want to use fewer, uh, uh, smaller amounts of the uh, uh, ingredients than I showed you just uh, a few minutes ago. Now, when you're heating up your grease, People say, well, how long do I preheat it for? Mine starts to smoke after a few seconds. Well, turn the heat down. It shouldn't be smoking fast. But I'll cheat <laughs> and show you a certain way. You take some onions and you put them in there. And you wait to see how long it takes to make it start to sizzle. Don't put too many in there. That's going to defeat the purpose, isn't it? All you want to do is hear that little bit of sizzle come. And we'll listen to see how long it takes. Well, it's taking a little longer than all that, but that's okay. You get that oil all over the bottom of your pan because we do want a hot pan uh, to, to go into this. Oh, here we go. Starting to hear it now. Starting to see, you'll, you'll look in here, man. We'll, we'll look in, let's get your camera up here. We'll go ahead and we'll see. Woo. See how those bubbles come up on those onions there? You see how that works? You see that's happening? 
That is good stuff, man. Get a little sizzle going. There we go. You'll hear that sizzle, you'll hear that pop. Let's put in our onions, a yellow onion. Put the dish in the bowl. Bowl in the dish, bowl in the sink, sink in the bowl. Boy, English teachers are getting workout on me today. <laughs> now these vegetables are going to cook down. They're not going to stay real crunchy. You don't really want them to. Not with something like this. You want the flavor. You want the juice out of these things. And you ask yourself, hey, Dr. Gould, can I add some fresh garlic to this? Of course you can. I'm just out of it. So that's all. Monitor your heat. You don't want things smoking, smoking, smoking hot. You don't want burnt food. Add some more green onions, some green onions now. Put the pot in the pan, in the pan, in the bowl, in the bowl, in the plate. Sink. I like my grandma used to say, the zinc. Never could place that accent, man. Grandma grew up in Indiana, moved to Tennessee. That accent was like West Indies somewhere. Bizarre. Love it. Love it, love it. Here we are. Now, Chef Gregory would cook this thing whenever I came over for lunch because he knew that I was going to dig it. And I never asked him exactly what he put in there because it would vary just a little bit depending I think on the mood what you're looking for hey Dr. Cool can I add some cabbage to this Ooh, cut it up thin now if you're going to do big chunks of cabbage you're going to want to cook the cabbage a different way or you're kind of wasting your cabbage now listen to that Woo. got those onions and green onions going celery baby Celery without peanut butter. There we go. Now, celery is neat for several reasons. One, it's excellent roughage, which becomes more important the older you get, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Celery actually is an anti calorie food, it's like less than zero calories. There's a scientific reason behind that, and it would take a mad scientist to explain it. But that's okay. There we go. Get that cooking down a little bit in there. And we're gonna cover for that. Cover that for just a minute. Let it sweat. Let that stuff uh, cook down a little bit. And that's gonna add some moisture to your pan. That's okay. When we take the lid off. All that's going to evaporate, you know, uh, give it time, it's going to simmer a little longer, it's going to be some good food. Give it time to do its thing. I'll put that down to a medium heat for a few minutes. Give it five or six minutes, let it cook, let it get those flavors all incorporated here. And we'll start adding the rest of our ingredients. Now I've switched bottles. You can see I've got my garlic in a shaker. Because this is how you cook with some. We put some garlic in there. Look at this. Look at this. Woo, look at that. I smell that. Is it strong enough? Does it smell strong enough? It doesn't smell strong enough yet. Let's add a little more. Now we can come back to that as it cooks. Ooh, there we go. There's the smell we're looking for. If you can't smell it, it's on video. That's that 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 that, 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 that that's, that's 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 pretty much why. Ooh. 
getting those onions soft and they're starting to get clear. They're starting to get clear. Now over here, just out of your line of sight here, I've got some chicken broth. Now if you're making that with bouillon, or the cubes, or the paste, or whatever, keep it stirred. You don't want to just like powder sitting in the middle of a pan. If you're using broth out of a little jug or something, it's fine. It's already broth, isn't it? <laughs> broth. Get these vegetables going, man. Now we got the carrots. That seems to have fallen in the floor. That's all right. I'll forget about it later and trip over it on the way out of the kitchen. There we go. Now, we've got a little bit of a, a Sheshers because, well, the other seasoning's not in a shaker bottle, is it? Look at that. A little layer of it. Nothing too bad, nothing too fancy, man. But I like the kick that that gives it. Woo! And you can smell it. You can smell it real quick. There we go. Woo, listen to that scrape. Metal against metal. That doesn't, doesn't that make your whole spinal cord just go... <laughs> Medium, medium high. And we'll get it going. There we go. Let's let that sweat just a little bit. Now these vegetables are really just your base. They're not the substance uh, of the meal. The substance of the meal is going to be in the chicken and in the Brussels sprouts. But that's going to be it. Now you're going to serve it with all that other stuff because that's what's going to be bringing the flavor. Uh, to go with that, but uh, in this case we're, we're making almost a, a stew of the vegetables and not uh, side dishes. They're not going to be cooked. They're not going to be cooked the, uh, the, the, the same way. By the way, keep in mind that pan lid gets really hot when there's lots of heat going under it, so make sure you've got good gloves or hot pads or towels or neighborhood kids or something to get that instead of, uh, of yourself. There we go. Now you'll notice this stuff starting uh, to, uh, to change color just a bit. Let's take a look in there. See that? It's starting to change color. The greens aren't as green anymore. The, uh, the onion itself is, is going from, from white to clear. And boy, you can smell that garlic. There we go. Ding. Now as things start to, to cook up here, now we're going to have two stages of seasoning, some early on and some a little later, because we got to check and make sure it's exactly the way we want it. Little Maggie here. Magai. Maggie. Anyway, it's good. Get some of that in there. Woo! You see that? I sprinkled some. Exactly some. Stir it up. It's got the tiniest hint of a soy smell to it, but it's not soy sauce. It's, there's got a lot more to it. And we're going to be taking our chicken and putting it down all the way into the pan. All the way down so it touches the bottom there. And let those vegetables get on top of it there. set that probably around if you're if your dial has a one to ten like most of them do or one to low to high one to nine put it around a seven six or seven keep an eye on it of course but let it cook let it simmer then what you're going to want to do to help it steam is to power it with just a little bit of that chicken broth Set it around seven, let it cook for a few minutes. We're not done. The chicken's got a little get uh, a little bit more done. And then we're gonna be adding the, the Brussels sprouts. We're going to go back in, make 
some seasoning additions. So hang out. Do your architectural explorations always begin with an inspection of ancestral crypts, Mr. Schiller? You are the Countess Doling and DeVries, I presume? I am. My apologies. I came across the crypt by accident. By accident? Yes. You see, I was following up. Yes. Shadow of some sort. Indeed? Whose? I'm not certain. Oh. Do you normally wonder about stalking shadows in the evening? Countess, this morning I encountered a young woman who bade me to remain until you returned. Finally growing impatient, I took a stroll outside and discovered that same woman dead. You mean my housekeeper? Oh, she often gives that appearance. You don't understand. I found her corpse in an open grave. Perhaps the legend of this castle is having a deleterious effect on your reason or a stimulating effect on your fancy. Wouldn't you say so, Lara? As you can see, Mr. Schiller, she's quite alive. Although her demeanor does put strangers off at times. When I first met her, I told her she had the aura of a zombie. But it didn't make her laugh, poor dear. <laughs> no. Lara never laughs. Unfortunately, she has no sense of humor. Lara, set another place at the table. You will stay for dinner, won't you, Mr. Schiller? Yes, of course. Indeed. And it doesn't give you a strange feeling living here. In the very same castle once inhabited by the infamous Count Dracula. Quite frankly, it has no such effect upon me, Mr. Schiller. I feel very much at home here. Oh. Forgive me, I seem to have committed a faux pas. You are related then to the Count? <laughs> You need have no fear. I'm merely indebted to him insofar as his infamous name and reputation made it possible for me to acquire this estate for a rather modest sum. <laughs> I can't help asking myself how a woman, lovely and charming as you are, can bear wasting her beauty in the confines of these melancholy walls. The outside world has so much to offer you. <laughs> what? Parties? Dances and other mundane frivolities? No. It can offer me no more than that which I already have. The peace and quiet, this marvelous sense of solitude and eternal tranquility, which permeates everything around here. It makes me feel more alive and sensitive to certain things. Sensations which one misses in the outside world. Can you understand? Yes, I understand. But I fear that I could never give up to the extent that you have those mundane frivolities which afford me so much pleasure. Who knows what pleasures you might find if you try. I'm afraid it's making my head spin. My head's spinning also, but not from the wine. Oh, Mr. Schiller, you do have a way about you. I imagine women find you quite irresistible, do they? Do you? Quite. 
but perhaps not in the same way as the others. Oh? In what way, then? Differently. Oh, my dear Countess, all of the other women in my life are like so many ladies of the night compared to you. Ah, but I am, in my own fashion, also a lady of the night. Castle Dracula. Thank you. to have startled you. It's just that we're not accustomed to having visitors often to the castle and at this hour. Not accustomed, perhaps, to having two visitors on the same day who look so much alike. I don't understand. Forgive what may seem presumption, madam, but your reaction is one I know quite well. It tells me my twin brother Franz has already been here. May I see him? I'm Carl Schiller. Or am I intruding? Do come in. Thank you. Follow me. Your brother was here indeed, but he has already departed. Come! strange as I was supposed to meet him here. Oh, really? Mr. Schiller, the resemblance is truly extraordinary. Yes, we've often... Uh, 
I found your brother's comportment strange. Certainly not befitting a gentleman. If anything, to the contrary. You see, he spent the entire day exploring the castle for his architectural studies. Architectural studies? That's right. And then, with hardly a word of thanks for the hospitality accorded him, he left. Abruptly. Abruptly, hmm? <laughs> Thank you. That's not like Franz. Where did he go? A lady may be forgiven curiosity, Mr. Schiller, but not indiscretion. Dude, cool line. But not indiscretion. <laughs> cool. I admit I was rather offended. But then, this unexpected appearance of his identical twin brother is having the most placating effect upon me. Hmm. You will stay the night, won't you, Mr. Schiller? If only to make amends for your family's chivalry and honor. If only to make amends.
worry too much about your brother. I trust you enjoyed supper, and I'm quite certain that come tomorrow, you shall find him. I'm certain. Good night, Mr. Schiller. Good night, madam.
gentlemen, we here at Cooking with Dr. Ghoul would like to address a very disturbing and serious social problem that's sweeping our, our nation and possibly our world right now, and that is literally, the word literally. You see, literally is one of those words that almost needs never be used in casual conversation. As it turns out, eight out of 10 children in the United States have no idea what literally actually means, nor do they know how to use it. And because of that, uninformed children might use literally 30 or 40 times in a single hour. And you'll want to choke them. For example, it's unnecessary to say, there are literally too many superheroes in this picture. Little shout out to Yahoo.com and the geniuses over there that made that a headline. Another thing, literal is different than figurative. They figuratively talked my ear off or they Figuratively, bash your brains in. Those are two very different concepts. So give generously. Buy your local school teacher a drink. Perhaps get your English professor a bottle of Tylenol or maybe even a Percocet. <laughs> but keep them nice and lubricated because they feel this pain most of all. So from all of us here at the kitchen of Cooking with Dr. Ghoul to all of you, just stop it. No idea how you got into that crypt, huh? No. No. And what's the last thing you do remember? Remember? Seeing you come up the stairs. I 
tried a call or two. And nothing. Some... <laughs> Somebody must have hit me over the head. That's all I know. Hmm. The amulet, Franz. Hmm? Where's the amulet? I don't have it. What do you mean you don't have it? You took it from me, didn't you? What have you done with it? I think I left it at the inn where I stayed last night. I remember showing it to the innkeeper's daughter. <laughs> Pretty girl. How could you be so careless? Don't you realize that without it we could be... We could risk being... Turned into vampires? right down. seven, eight, or nine minutes or so uh, uh, of this wonderfulness. <coughs> Woo! Smell that. You'll look into the chicken. We'll look into the chicken. You see how it's getting cooked there? Hadn't been flipped yet. Maybe halfway through, maybe a little more. Flip it all over, man. And if some vegetables are on the bottom of it, good. 
You turn around over here so you know where you're watching. Here we are. There we go. Now we've got our chicken flipped. It's cooked probably halfway, maybe a little more, because we get that chicken broth in the bottom, boiling through, steaming the whole thing, making it very happy. Now we've got these little muggies. And I'm going to set them in here. I don't want to just drop them, have them sitting on the top, not getting the attention that they need. Let's set them, let's set them all the way in through there, man. You know, either one or two that won't quite make the bottom there. But as a rule, we got them covered. A little more of your chicken broth. Hear that simmer going. Again with some. Add some garlic powder. You don't need any more of the uh, Cajun Creole spice. You don't need a huge amount of spice for this. Those vegetables are going to add a lot. Take your little friend Maggie here. some not a huge amount it's strong you don't need you know half a cup Ugh, that'd be way too much but you put your lid back on there cover that for a bit let it simmer we're gonna go back in four or five minutes and check to see if those brussels sprouts are are, are cooked through because that's gonna be the measure you know your chicken's almost done all we're really waiting for is those uh, vegetables uh, those Brussels sprouts to, to get right where they need to be. Of course, we need the chicken to be where it's going to be. It'll be fine. We got that stock boiling up through there, steaming that. It's going to be really good. Give it five or six minutes. Check on it. And uh, uh, we're going to do exactly that. We'll be right back, and we'll see how that goes. All right, here we are. Just seconds seem to have passed. <laughs> Now there is your chance to tell if you're doing it right. That smell, <clears throat> that smell hits you. It lets you know if you're doing the right thing or not, man. Let's take a look, see where we are. Look at that. Look at that. Now you see all of that liquid in there. We're gonna leave the lid off for a few minutes and let it cook down a little bit. Everything is still getting plenty of steam. Your chicken is all cooked. The only thing that's happening to your chicken now is tenderizing. And you can hit those little Brussels sprouts with your edge of your spatula, right? See how soft they feel. The bigger ones are the ones you're going to want to concern yourself. The little ones will be obviously cooking faster. But you don't want a whole lot of liquid in it. You want to let the majority of it cook down. It'll be a nice rich stock what's going to be in there. And all that flavor will have gone through those uh, uh, Brussels sprouts and through that chicken and it'll be really really good. So we're going to leave the top off of this maybe four, maybe five minutes. It'll cook way down, and when we come back, we're gonna take a look at the final dish and see what we have for a little bit of chicken a Gregory. <laughs> and there we have it, kids. The beautiful and the wonderful chicken Gregory. <laughs> Good stuff. I know you'll enjoy it. Go ahead and try it at the house. Be brave. Feel good about it. You can cook it with some. The amounts that I showed you here during the show will feed two people really well. Three if you've got a side salad and some garlic toast. Uh, so enjoy. Love good food. I hope you enjoyed your movie. So until next time, from Cooking with Dr. Ghoul, Bon Appetite.
or anything. God, 70% of this film is people walking around like they're lost at the mall. sense it. I feel changed. No longer like myself. But like him. As though he is possessing me. He is my beloved. You've taken his place. But only because he wants it so. Coming here at this time was essential to the continuance of what must be. And what is that, my love? <laughs> Don't be impatient. This night, after our marriage, you will know all. And the greatest power that exists will be yours to share with me. Yes, this too, my beloved. The time is at hand. I must preside over the ritual ceremony which heralds our black mask wedding. My disciples await me. And, and what must I do? I shall guide you. Now rest. You'll be called for when the moment arrives. Bravo! <laughs> Friends, you are marvelous. <laughs> I overheard everything. It was an excellent piece of acting. I have to admit, you even had me fool there for a minute. <laughs> Count Dracula. Astaroth! Help us! Demon Hayton! Agora! Palu! Help us! Asmodeus! We beseech thee! The flames and thy honor! O great God, Baal! Sathanas, Sathanas, we offer unto thee of the virgins. Um Anapadma, Um Anapadma, Um. Hail, Mistress of Dracula, are we not blood? Then you approve? 
Of course I do. Except for one thing. Oh? What? The Black Mask Wedding. But then you don't intend to go through with it, do you? I'm afraid I must. It won't be necessary. I think I have a better solution. No. This is the best solution. Franz, you're not serious about this. It could be dangerous. I'm prepared to take that chance. But you don't have to. But I want to. And I want you to be my best man. <laughs> ultimate vestal sacrifice, my beloved. The one that shall consecrate our union. I pass this honor to you. Oh, 
great gods and powers that be, Mana, Dua, Triad, as we recoil into the womb of darkness, feeding eternally on blood, we offer unto thee this night the supreme sacrifice. No! 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 He's an imposter! Oh, let him be punished! Thank <laughs> you. 
didn't help you before. Perhaps it'll help you now. important, but it wasn't worth the life of my brother. I liked your brother a lot, Carl. He was really nice, but I like you even better. 